McCrease low, McCrease one. Some guy handed me a briefcase and told me to do what I was born to do. Review keyboards, what do you think? All joking aside, just like the title suggests, today we're going to be taking a look at Razer's newly announced Huntsman Elite Keyboard. And because you guys have been supporting me so much and I really wanted to get back to you, I am going to be doing a giveaway for this keyboard as well, but I'll have all the details on that at the end of the video. For now, let's go ahead and just take a look at this thing. Starting as always with construction and design, the Razer Huntsman Elite combines many of the popular design choices of Razer's last few keyboard lines into what I think is their best looking keyboard yet. The Huntsman Elite is a 104 key mechanical keyboard with an exposed switch design over a fingerprint resistant metal backplate. It borrows from the simplified aesthetic of the Black Widow X which made it very popular on its release two years ago. You'll also notice the addition of the underglow around the board which we saw introduced with the Sinosochroma Pro. And lastly, the Huntsman also includes the nice pillowy leatherette magnetic wrist rest that we got with the Ornata and the Black Widow V2. The main improvement here being the addition of the underglow around the wrist rest as well. I've always liked that Razer's wrist rests are long enough to accommodate even the largest of hands, which is one of the gripes that I often have with included wrist rests from many other brands as my long fingers result in my wrists ending up on the desk most of the time, and the soft nature of the padding greatly reduces fatigue over long gaming sessions. The keyboard itself, much like the Black Widow X, feels nice and weighty and solidly built and has minimal flex when mashing down on the board. So let's take a look now at what is probably the most interesting aspect of the Huntsman line of keyboards and that is the new Opto Mechanical Switch or as I like to call it the Purple Switch because well that's my favorite color and it made me a little bit excited to see purple switches now on Razer keyboards. But essentially what they are is they're optical switches and it's important to understand the difference between mechanical and optical switches. So a mechanical switch has two metal contact points that when they connect together, send a signal into the computer which registers the keystroke. The optical switches use kind of the same technology as what would be in a mouse sensor, but now it has those optical sensors in every single one of these switches. And essentially the way that it works is it's constantly firing a beam of light that's being interrupted by the stem of the switch. And when that gets depressed down, that beam of light's able to go all the way across and connect with the sensor, which basically allows it to register at the speed of light and sends that signal into the computer. And it's more consistent than using the metal contacts and it also has much better durability because over time those metal contact points can corrode and degrade and by not having that movable piece uh, that's essentially going to give you a much longer lifespan which is why these are rated to last at a hundred million clicks. Some other differences you'll notice is that they have a lighter key press at 45 grams, they have a slightly shorter actuation distance at 1.5 millimeters and a total travel at 3.5 millimeters, which is kind of a good sweet spot between something like the Razer yellows and the Razer green switches. Another big difference you'll notice on these switches as well is that they have stabilizers built into every single switch that runs here on both sides. Kind of works like a stabilizer that would be in your space bar, or your enter key, and that just helps eliminate key wobble, which has always kind of been a gripe of mine of Razer switches in the past. And so that completely eliminates that and results in a more agile switch and also just a more stable overall experience when gaming and with typing. Another cool thing about the Opto Mechanical Switch is that the click mechanism and the actuation are two separate mechanisms that work in parallel. So with a classic mechanical switch, you have the actual click happening before the switch actuates, just slightly before. But by having them separate but going at the same time, you will actually feel the click and hear it at the exact same time that it registers in the computer, which makes them different than mechanical switches as well. It's also important to note that the Opto Mechanical Switch is only offered on the Huntsman line of keyboards and is the only switch planned to be on them at this time. And just so you guys can hear how this new switch sounds for yourselves, here is a quick sound test.
The keycaps on the Huntsman Elite are made of ABS plastic and have a nice smooth texture to them. They have the same crisp font that all of Razer's newer keyboards have, which is a welcome sight. And while all of the keys are nicely illuminated by those optomechanical switches, the secondary functions are still not translucent, which has been a gripe of mine with Razer keyboards for years. In terms of lighting, the Huntsman Elite offers the same bright, vibrant lighting we've come to expect from Chroma-enabled devices. The Huntsman is by far the most customizable and flashy Razer keyboard yet and offers an impressive 168 unique lighting zones which can all be changed independently to create even more elaborate effects than ever. The underglow for the keyboard itself has 38 zones, the wrist rest has 24, and the media keys are also RGB enabled as well as of course full per key illumination across the board. The Huntsman Elite is powered by Razer Synapse 3 software which I've always said in my eyes is the current industry leader in keyboard and lighting software. Its intuitive interface makes it easy for those who just want to set the board to one of the great looking presets and powerful enough for those looking for more elaborate effects can create their own multi-layer designs. In terms of extras, the Huntsman Elite comes with a set of dedicated media keys with a multi-function digital dial. Default it works as your typical volume scroll wheel, but using Razer's HyperShift technology, which I'll elaborate a little bit more on here in just a minute, it can become much more. You can use it for editing by, say, binding your zoom in and zoom out functions to it, or you can use it in-game to cycle through your weapons. You can use it for any number of things just by changing its function in Synapse. I'll admit that I was a little bit bummed to see no dedicated macro keys on this board. Maybe it's because I'm a bit old school in that regard, but I just like to have some dedicated keys. But the HyperShift technology seeks to make up for it. The way it works is essentially allowing you to assign macros or different functions to each key that can be activated by holding the HyperShift key and hitting the appropriate key with the assigned macro that you want. It's not as simple as just having dedicated buttons, but after some practice it does give you a lot of options. Razer's never included keycap pullers with their mechanical keyboards, but with each release I always expect to see one thrown in, but unfortunately the Huntsman Elite keeps up with this trend and does not include a keycap puller. Another interesting feature of the Huntsman Elite is the possibility for additional add-ons in the future. The RGB wrist rest connects to the keyboard via a set of pogo pins, which are able to send both data and power via USB 2.0 connection. This is also why you won't find a USB pass-through on this board, even though it does come with two USB connectors. And Razer's hinted at the possibility of additional devices being offered in the future to augment the Huntsman that would connect via these pins. I'm very curious to see where this goes, as it would be cool to have something like maybe a touchscreen integrated into the wrist rest. Just keep in mind that this will no doubt come at some additional cost. The underside of the Huntsman Elite has six large rubberized pads and two step extendable legs to keep the keyboard in place during use, and the cable is nicely braided and ends in two USB connectors. Overall, the Huntsman Elite is the best keyboard Razer has released to date. My only complaints is the lack of included keycap puller and the fact that the secondary functions still aren't illuminated. Still, minor gripes aside, the improved lighting looks great paired with the minimalistic aesthetic of the board, and the digital dial is a cool concept that adds some flexibility. The star of the show is the optomechanical switches that perform better than any of Razer's switches, offering a solid experience that, much like the Huntsman itself, combines the best aspects of all of their switches so far. The Huntsman Elite comes in at 199 bucks. It's definitely a steep price point, but that being said, I do recommend that you guys check it out, as in my eyes, it is the best Razer keyboard yet. Well, that's it for this review, guys. Let me know in those comments down below what you think about Razer's new optomechanical switch. And like I said, I am gonna be giving one of these keyboards away. All you have to do to be eligible to win is like this video and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, and I will be choosing a winner down in the comments below. Also, if you wanna learn more about the optomechanical switch, I also have a four switch comparison of all of Razer's switches now in the description as well so you guys can learn more about the differences between the switches. And also, like I mentioned, there is another version of the Huntsman keyboard. I also have the comparison between these two keyboards in the description as well. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Of course, if you enjoyed it, give it a like to show your support. And if you're new here and you wanna win that giveaway, make sure you're subscribed. And also, you can follow me on Twitter at BrainBeanGaming to stay up to date with what's going on with the channel. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.